the topic selected for today is transport in plants. In plants, we come across various types of transport. This transport can be for long distance travel or for short distance travel. In animals, we, go, we come across a separate transport system. In all higher animals, we find it. But in plants, such a separate system of transport is absent, but there are various mechanisms that help in the transport of substances from one point to another point. Long distance transport is helped by the vascular tissue in the form of xylem and phloem. Today, I am taking up short distance transport in plants. This short distance transport is carried out by diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, and through porins. Then, first let us take up diffusion. Diffusion is movement of molecules or ions from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. This happens until an equilibrium is established and this movement is downhill movement. It means the ions move from the source of higher concentration to a source of lower concentration. I have drawn one figure here. There are two solutions, solution A and solution B, separated by a semi-permeable membrane. In solution A, there are, let us say, seven molecules. In solution B, there are three molecules of the same type. Molecules exhibit kinetic movements. They move in different directions. Here, molecules of this chamber enter the chamber B. Similarly, molecules of molecules present in chamber B enter chamber A. It will be happening continuously. But in this case, what happens is there is a difference in ionic concentration in the two chambers or molecular concentration. Molecules are in the higher concentration in the chamber and the molecules are in lower concentration in the chamber. As a result, what happens is more number of molecules from chamber A move into the chamber B through the semi-permeable membrane until an equilibrium is established. That is, the number of molecules and ions come to the same number in both the chambers. So here, the chamber has seven molecules, the chamber has three molecules. Coming to the, this figure, in chamber A there are 5 molecules and chamber B 5 molecules. That means the molecules are equally distributed between the two chambers. This is called downhill movement. Downhill movement means moving from higher concentration to lower concentration. And this type of diffusion occurs in both living and also in non-living substances, living organisms and non-living substances. And this movement through diffusion does not require any expenditure of energy. So there is no need to spend any ATP molecules in this process of diffusion. But diffusion is a very slow process. And a diffusion is seen, a diffusion of molecules is seen are exhibited by both the gases and liquids. Diffusion may also occur in solids. Then, in plants, diffusion plays an important role in the movement of gases, that is oxygen and the carbon dioxide. And diffusion is always a passive process and also spontaneous. It occurs automatically and this helps in the transport of substances or molecules over a short distance. Then, diffusion is affected by concentration gradient, membrane permeability, temperature, pressure, etc. 
But important, one more important point about diffusion is no protein molecules are involved in this type of transport. So the points to remember in the case of diffusion is the movement is always downhill. That means from higher concentration to lower concentration. The molecules move from higher concentration to lower concentration. It requires no energy. It is a slow process. No proteins are involved in this type of diffusion. Next one is facilitated diffusion. Here the diffusion is facilitated or helped or assisted by some proteins present in the cell membrane. These membranes are known as, these proteins are known as carrier proteins or channel proteins. You know that the cell membrane is a bilipid layer and it has both extrinsic and intrinsic proteins. Some of the extrinsic proteins or the intrinsic proteins act as carrier proteins or channel proteins. They assist in the transport of selected ions or molecules across the cell membrane. So here in this case what happens is unlike diffusion these ions or molecules cannot pass through the cell membrane on their own. Their movement has to be assisted by specific integral proteins. And here also no energy is spent, no ATP is expended. It is also a downhill process. In this case also the molecules or ions move from higher concentration to lower concentration. Then let us see now the definition of facilitated diffusion. Facilitation, facilitated diffusion is the movement of ions or molecules across a membrane with the help of a carrier or channel protein. That is the definition. Then, this type of transport facilitates movement of substances with hydrophilic moiety. Hydrophilic means water loving or water dissolving. So, substances that have hydrophilic moiety are transported through facilitated diffusion because they cannot pass through the lipid membrane. As a result, these proteins take up these molecules and they release them into the cell. Then, this movement occurs till an equilibrium is established on both sides of the cell membrane. Then, this diffusion, this type of diffusion also helps in the movement of polar molecules. Small polar molecules have a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other side. Such molecules also cannot pass through cell membrane on their own. Their movement has to be assisted or guided by the channel proteins. These proteins also help in the transport of small polar molecules into the cell across the cell membrane. Then, I already have told you, these proteins are selective in nature. That means, one type of protein molecule transports only a particular type of molecule. And this relationship is specific. Then, the facilitated diffusion channels are either gated or open. Then, the carrier proteins are affected by inhibitory substances like poisons. When they are affected by poisons, the facilitated diffusion comes to an end. Then, passive facilitated diffusion. I am telling you, passive means the three processes I am going to describe are passive types of diffusion, where energy is not expended. The passive facilitated diffusion is three types. They are known as symports, antiports, uniports. Symports. Symports means 
a simple trans simple diffusion means transport together or traveling together in this case what happens is integral membrane proteins transport two or more different types of molecules in the same direction so here i have drawn one figure this is the cell membrane this is the integral protein and these are substances a and b here what happens is both the substances a and b travel together from outside into the cell through the carrier protein so in the case of simple what happens two or more different types of molecules travel together through the carrier protein that is located in the cell membrane example movement of glucose and sodium ions across the cell membrane second one is called the antiport the antiport is a contra transport it is a type of contra transport contra means one one type of molecule moves into the cell and at the same time another type of molecule moves out of the cell here the molecules move in opposite directions at the same time so anti transport means it is a contra transport where two or more different types of molecules move across the membrane across the membrane proteins in the opposite direction here i have drawn again same figure but here molecule a is moving from outside to inside the cell and molecule b is moving from inside to the outside of the cell to the carrier protein example for this one is movement of sodium ions and hydrogen ions here if one ion enters the cell and the ion leaves the cell it happens simultaneously third one is uniports in the case of uniports movement of small molecules or ions through the membrane proteins in a unidirectional way that means ions or molecules that are small travel in only one direction either into the cell or out of the cell here i have drawn so here molecule a is traveling into the cell through the channel protein example is uptake of calcium ions by the mitochondria so these are the three types of facilitated diffusion the third one is active transport active transport is very important in all the living systems the name itself indicates it is active where these two facilitated diffusion and diffusion are passive process because in both the diffusion and the facilitated diffusion no energy is spent and the movement or diffusion is a slow process but in the case of active transport energy is expended a lot of energy is spent and here the movement is uphill process or the molecules or ions move from lower concentration to higher concentration and this type of movement is known as uphill movement then it is also carried out by membrane proteins embedded in the cell membrane then the transport proteins are sensitive to inhibitory substances like poisons the best example for active transport is sodium potassium exchange pump here i have drawn a figure here chamber a and the chamber b are separated by a semi permeable membrane in chamber a there are three molecules and in chamber b there are 10 molecules there are seven molecules now 10 seven molecules so there is ionic gradient there is a difference the concentration is lower in the chamber a and the concentration of the molecules is higher in chamber b in the case of active transport what happens the molecules move against the concentration gradient 
that is they move from chamber A to chamber B. In this case what happens? In the case of diffusion and the facilitated diffusion, the ions or molecules move from higher concentration to lower concentration. But here the molecules or ions are moving from lower concentration to higher concentration. As a result what happens? All the three molecules present in chamber A are transported into chamber B by using energy. In this way, chamber A becomes empty and all the molecules have pumped into chamber B. In the case of diffusion, what happens? Or facilitated diffusion? An equilibrium is established by having the same number of molecules on either side of the semi permeable membrane. But here, there is unequal distribution. All the molecules are on one side of the membrane. The other side of the membrane is without any molecules. This is best seen in the proximal convoluted tubule of nephron, where the entire glucose present in the ultrafiltrate is reabsorbed into the blood through active transport. In this way, in the case of active transport, the ions or molecules move against the concentration gradient. Then, porins. Porins are the membrane proteins that form huge pores in the outer cell membrane of plastids and mitochondria. So these are here in the case of facilitated diffusion and reactive transport, the proteins transport the molecules either into the cell or out of the cell. But in the case of porins, what happens? The membrane proteins have openings or tunnel like openings in them. And these openings are filled with water and these openings help in the movement of small sized protein molecules across the cell membrane. In these cases, only molecules or ions are moving. But in the case of porins, small cellular proteins are moving through these openings. Because the cells have pores, they are known as porins. These porins are also known as beta barrel proteins. They allow hydrophilic molecules or hydrophilic protein molecules to pass through them. These porins you know that in mitochondria and plastids, there are two membranes, outer membrane and inner membrane. So in the case of mitochondria and plastids, the porins are present in the outer membrane. The porins are also present in the membranes of gram-negative bacteria. In this way, proteins or porins help in the transport of small sized proteins. This is about uh, short distance travel of molecules and proteins in the plants. Thank you.